Hey guys, Cloud here, and today we will be doing ammo reloading uh, of various types all in one. So it's going to be a lot. Stick around. I'm going to try to get into this as quickly as possible. Just a quick overview of what we're going to do. So you can see it says three out of six. If I shoot, it's two out of six, one out of six. If I offhand it, it will reload one at a time, and the right of the pipe is my reserve. And this little display is something that I kind of just cooked up very quickly. So maybe pull it from the download or just go along without it. So to do that display, which we will be using to our advantage later, I just added a set uh, name inside of set stats after it copies the MBT, it edits the name and it edits the name based off a couple scoreboards that we haven't even set up yet. So we're gonna go ahead and set up those scoreboards real quick for you guys. But before we get into that, let's update from last week. So we did reloading last week. I'm going to get rid of replace and give boop. Uh, we came up with a better way. Someone in the comments mentioned this. Uh, just a better convention, just swap the offhand with the main hand. So we're going to do that. And we're also going to do change this from saving to offhand, save it to stats, dot tag dot stats, so that we kind of like load our gun stats when we start the reload. And then inside here, we're going to do item modify block zero negative 64 zero container dot zero from entity at s weapon dot offhand okay and then item modify entity at s weapon dot main hand from entity at s weapon dot offhand uh actually the main hand will come from i have to keep this in mind because we're basically swapping the main hand with the offhand instead of like doing the gif so we have offhand and we'll copy the offhand from block zero negative 64 zero container dot zero and the reason for this is uh you can't do a equals b if i do a equals b b equals a well that won't work because a will copy from b and then b will just be itself so we're not actually swapping them so this is how we swap it we put a middle uh middle mid a place in the middle where it copies to and then copies from. So this is gonna copy what's in the offhand. So then we copy from the offhand to the main hand, and then from the main hand from the container. And then we'll just move this at the bottom. So I'm gonna have slash reload, okay. And then I'll go ahead and put something in my offhand and then hit F. All of these I completely messed up. It's replace instead of modify. Sorry about that. So we'll hit reload and we'll just swap them and they'll go back and forth. And uh, if I do this, it will just go back and forth. And if I manually place it here, it will just put it in my offhand, just like that. Okay, so that's cool. Now we're going to go into the input inf change, to delete this word saying of swap because it's gonna get annoying. And the other thing we need to modify is inside here, because basically what's gonna happen is we're going to run the inf change, it's going to start the reload, but then it's going to detect that the ID is wrong. So we have to basically override it so that this detection of swapping ID does not happen. And the way we do that is we basically just copy this command here inside the start, we load this here, and we copy to at s gun ID, okay? So the reason we did that, and you will see right here, I will just say the word swap here. So now when I hit reload, if I switch anything, it'll say the word swap, correct? Now, if I hit this, it will only say the word swap once. And that actually happens to coincide with me moving it and not me reloading. So it'll say the word reload, but it won't say the word swap. That way, if you swap, we can tell it to stop reloading. That's, that's kind of the point here. So right here, we're gonna do function gun reload slash stop, which will just trigger it so that you stop reload. So let's make a function called stop and delete everything in it. And now we have to make some stats for the gun. So we're going to go to get stats. We're going to go to get, and we're gonna make some new stats. So we're gonna have a new tag inside the stats that will be called uh, reload. Okay, and inside reload, we're gonna have information. So we're gonna have a timer and we'll just set the timer to five. We're going to have uh, per, which is how many you reload per. We'll just set that to one for now. And we'll have mag, which is how many is in the mag. And we'll set it to six for now. So it's kind of like a revolver. You put one bullet in at a time and it takes five ticks per bullet you put in. 
Okay, so now we have to pull these stats. So let's go ahead and copy this and then do reload.time, reload.time. And then we're going to have reload.per and reload.mag. The reason I go with reload.per is because it's easier for you as a user or as somebody editing stats to understand, but it's actually not the ideal value you would want. And we'll get to that in a little bit here. So now we pulled the stats on. Uh, when you start, you need to grab these stats. So let's go ahead and go into uh, the start and run function gun gun slash get stats. So we just need to grab the stats. And what we need to do is we need to put that those values onto a value that the player remembers. So inside init, we need some more uh, scoreboards, basically. So we're going to have a scoreboard called ammo dot reserve, which is where you'll pull ammo from to reload. We're going to have one called reload.time, which is the countdown. And then we're going to have one called reload.repeat, which is similar to per. It's related, but not quite exactly per. So when we start, we're going to do scoreboard players operation at s reload.time equals dot reload.time stats. So this will just load it onto the score. And then we're going to also, uh, instead, we are going to load repeat with the mag value and you'll get this in a sec here divided by per and this will tell you how many time iterations you have to go to reload the mag so if you reload one bullet and the mag is six and i know it's not a mag for a revolver but like, we're calling it a mag so the mag is six you have one bullet you how many times do you have to reload to get to the full well that will be six divided by one which is six uh so that's what the repeat is and that'll kind of be like a looping value so then inside stop we need to do scoreboard players set at s reload dot time zero scoreboard players set at s reload dot repeat zero so that will just zero us out so when we swap it will stop us okay uh now we need to go into the main iteration and put something for this per so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some comments here so we're going to make this section called get mbt we're going to make this section called shooting stuff we're going to make this section called scoping stuff and we're going to make this section called save mbt all right so then where we need to implement this reload stuff is we want the reload to also stop when you shoot and also stop when you scope because if you have an animation for your reload then it becomes very hard to do the animation with the scoping and the reload you're gonna have to do double the amount but you can do that if you want but we're gonna put it down here for simplicity and we're going to go execute if score at s reload dot repeat matches at least one run function gun reload slash main player so this is basically something that will happen every time, every tick of the of the reload. So we're going to go scoreboard players remove at s reload time one, execute if score at s reload time matches less than or equal to zero. Run function gun reload slash reload per. So this is going to reload something each time that you repeat. And inside here, we are going to remove one from reload repeat. And if reload repeat matches zero or less, then we go reload slash stop. So this will stop our reload. So that's good. Now we can do say repeat and reload the whole thing. Throw it to the offhand and you see one, two, three, four, five, six, and it went very fast. So the reason for that is we actually need to copy Again, the time. So scoreboard players operation at s reload dot time equals dot reload dot time stats. And by here, you will have loaded the stats because you have uh, gotten to that point, I believe. So let's actually just take a look back. Uh, I think inside the shoot, inside shoot, we need to have we have this command, but they're not shooting. So inside reload main, you're gonna have to load the stats. Uh, reload per you're gonna have to load the stats so we're gonna do that we're gonna make sure the stats get loaded uh, so then it will say repeat and we'll copy it okay so we'll hit reload and there you go it said the word repeat six times spaced out by five ticks each time 
All right, so now we need some other stuff. So we need the ammo, we need the shooting. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So inside shoot, uh, this is important. We're going to do if score at s ammo, uh, no, if score dot ammo stats matches at least one. Uh, and the reason for this is basically only shoot if you have ammo. So we'll kind of make a mental note of the uh, issue with burst and we'll fix that in a later video. Uh, but we'll just make a mental note of it. But at the very least, when you're shooting one bullet at a time, it'll be just fine. So now we're going to take a look at uh, that. So it removes one. And we can just copy these stats here. So inside reload per, then you are going to reload some stuff. So let's move this here. And let's move this here. And instead of removing, you're going to do operation stats plus equals dot reload dot per stats and you're going to increment and then you are also going to go ammo dot reserve at s and you're going to decrement the reserve ammo uh, so that is basically going to put ammo into the gun and then we're going to have a couple conditions here and those conditions are for overflow and underflow, the two cases. So first, let's just give a little quick little quick test here. So I click it, shoot, now it's five out of six, four out of six, three out of six, two out of six, one out of six, zero out of six, and it does not let me shoot anymore. Okay, and now if I hit F, it'll go one, two, three, four, five. And oh, minus one, it gave me a bullet. I get a free bullet. I have a negative one bullet. So now you can see the issues. We need underflow. We need overflow. So execute if score at s ammo dot reserve matches less than or equal to zero run function gun reload reload slash underflow, which will account for if you go negative, then execute if score dot ammo stats is equal to dot reload dot mag stats run function gun reload slash or just do scoreboard players set reload dot repeat zero so this will just set reload repeat to zero uh, and then the last one is if you are above the mag size for some reason because you have some weird numbers then we need to run the overflow case so that's right here and we have overflow and now we're going to have to get in some interesting math. So the different math operations you're going to need for underflow, and this is the case of underflow of reserve ammo. So we go scoreboard players operation dot ammo stats minus equals dot reload dot per stats. So keep in mind that we detected this after we already gave the ammo and we took away from reserve. So this is detecting, did we have negative reserve or are we completely out of reserve or not? Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to subtract. So we're reverting this operation. Okay. And then we're going to do scoreboard players and we're going to basically just revert this operation. So instead of adding, we're subtracting, we're just going to add. So this gets us back to the beginning. Then we need to do scoreboard players operation dot ammo stats plus equals add as reserve stats because if you went to negative then however much you're reloading per is you that's how much you use to go to the negative so for example if you reload 10 per but you only have five reserve and that would trigger it being negative and instead of reloading 10 you need to reload five so that's kind of the logic there so these two resets the inverse the operations this is a new operation for adding ammo and then finally do scoreboard players set at s ammo dot reserve to zero because you hit zero and scoreboard players set at s reload dot repeat zero because you uh, end the reloading. This kind of stop this command here kind of stops the reloading without calling the function because if you call the function that's less efficient and you might call it multiple times. Uh, okay, so now you have the case of underflow uh, overflow. So the case of overflow means that you are, say you put in 10 bullets per uh, iteration and you're at 25. So you would just put in 10. So now you're at 35, but your mag is only 30. So now you're five over. So to calculate how many you went over, you need to do scoreboard players operation hashtag temp stats equals dot ammo stats to see how much you currently have. And then we need to subtract 
the full mag size. So however big the max is supposed to be. And then you need to do scoreboard players operation at s ammo dot reserve plus equals hashtag temp stats. So this will give you your ammo back that you overflowed or in into the Mac. Uh, and then we need to do scoreboard players operation dot ammo stats equals dot reload mag stats. So this is the full mag. You make it full and then scoreboard players set at s reload dot repeat zero. So that's all the overflow operations. Basically anything above the mag goes back to your reserve and then you stop reloading and set it to the max. Okay, so let's generate some test cases. So we don't want any auto firing going on because that might have weird effects currently. We want to have zero ammo initially. And so the first case would be this. Now, if I go ahead and go into the uh, init function, I'm going to go scoreboard players set at a ammo dot reserve. 10 and we're just going to do three tests so we're going to hit reload we're going to do function gun gun slash get and uh, we're going to right click and nothing happens right okay so now i'm going to hit f and it should reload and it reloaded completely now i only have four left so i'm going to shoot three outs or no all of it okay and it should only bring me up to four there you go. So that's kind of testing one of our boundaries. The other would be underflow. Actually, no, that's that kind of handles underflow. Uh, and uh, so now let's just do another test, which this one is a little bit easier. So we're going to do seven per and we're going to do 22 in the mag. So we're going to hit reload. We're going to hit get. All right. So then we're going to hit uh, reload and I'm going to hit F. So this will reload 10 when it did seven per. So it did seven and then three, which kind of proves our underflow case uh, or not having enough in the mag. And uh, then I'm going to hit slash reload to get ammo back. And that will bring me up to 20. Okay. And now we'll test our overflow case because I have 20 out of 22. It should only bring me to 22 and it should remove two from the ammo reserve, which means I should have eight in the ammo reserve. So I hit F and now you see eight in the reserve, which is the number on the right and it's 22. So there you go. That's uh, overflow underflow. That is the whole reload system implemented. Now, if your question is, how do you get reserve ammo? We will define that later, but it's kind of based on your application. Maybe you want to have items that reload. Well, then you would load the information about how much ammo those items contain onto the reserve and then load it back or something like that. Um, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.